card on it. It might be a good card. Yeah, bro. I see you, uh, young brother. I'm 33 myself. I'm, I'm in uh, 42. All right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I I could um introduce myself. You know, my family's straight from Nigeria, where we had our own. You know, the continuation of the Marcus Garvey movement, where we're saying, "Hey, let's everybody needs to meet and discuss how we're gonna." You know, carve up Africa, we need our own space. So we're still doing that. You know, we have legal, or on paper it says that we have autonomous or self-managing communities. And I'm just part of that generation saying, let's, you know, let's remix everything, bring the diaspora on board, bring different communities on board. But it's just so complicated, trying to, you know, like resurrect communities that govern themselves and, you know, Native Americans kind of do it, but it's, it's hard, but that's what I'm, I'm basically doing. And that's what uh, Nana Ayoka, uh, we had talked about it uh, briefly, uh, but her connection to Africa, she's married uh, to a brother from Ghana. And our my base really is in Eastern Nigeria. Like it's a really specific place. I know most people go to Ghana, but then the politics is different over there. The structure, so it doesn't really work out, but she introduced me to a group scene. I guess if we could work something out, and so we got you here. And I guess that group was doing land. I wasn't in the meeting, so I was kind of thrown for a loop. And then I got all these other communities, some saying they're in, you know, hopscotching, double dutching. But yeah, I'm I'm here. I feel you're like, I know you can introduce yourself. I think you said you're from Chester, Philadelphia. Or Pennsylvania? Yeah, I was born in Chester, but I grew up in Atlanta. And I just mm. moved here from uh, Chester about two and a half years ago, almost three years ago. Mm. We've just been doing work in the community. Yeah. We got, a land, we got an acre and a quarter out in Williston that we're farming. And we do a no-till garden system. And we, we plant base. And we're just trying to educate everybody and get stuff back going how it's supposed to be and get people's to stop being codependent on the medical industry and just get our people back on track. I was supposed to be the elders all sick and on these medications and can't help the youth and it's just all fucked up out here. Yeah, I see. I see. Uh, do you know, are you familiar with the Nana Yoka's connection to the Pan-African Federalist Movement? Yeah, that's why I'm, that's why we're going to D.C. and uh, Next week, she plugged me into that because she want me to be a representative on that board. Okay, okay, yeah, I'd had I had had an issue working with them because basically their recommendations that I made weren't listened to. So I'm like, let me just work with the communities directly in Africa. But you know, you know the goals of the Pan African Fairless Movement. Are you familiar with that? I'm I'm learning it and. It, I guess that's why she put me in so I could have a better understanding because from what I understand, she was saying how I was already moving looked like I already knew what was going on. But as far as like federalizing or making independent African states, that I'm familiar with that part of it. Okay. I don't, I don't want to color you or steer you away from them. That'd be unethical, but you know, basically, uh, they can explain it their way, but the way I understood it was that they want to make Africa a, feder a federated state, like one African government, um, and then also include the diaspora. But then you have issues of basically, let's be honest, race in Africa, those colonization, um, tribal differences um, that haven't been addressed. So then the, the well, let's put it like this. The idea that Marcus Garvey had, you know, it's kind of like idea a lot of Black people had. You know, we came from these tribes and kingdoms. You know, our grandpas were born there. They told us stories. Let's go back and reconnect with our people. So Marcus Garvey, you know, he's from Jamaica. So he came to the USA studying uh, under Booker T. Washington, you know, Booker T. Washington. You know, do for self. He had that speech in Atlanta where everybody made fun of him, saying that everybody should get their own. What you're saying, yeah. trades and farming and yeah. uh, 
have your own trade school university that teaches you how to be basically run every industry. Um, he was also the national, basically he was a black president because he had something called the National Negro National Business League, like or National Negro Business League. So he ran black people as a nation and handled their business, started chapters all over the place. A lot of black people, you know, and organizations were ran with like a national structure, nationhood structure, business, all sorts of, it's, it's a common idea, but um, the AME Church is another one of those old institutions for black people to vote, they organize themselves as a nation. So it's, it's, it's a, a lot of the times you see a church getting shot up or a school getting shot up, it's connected to the AME Church because it's global, it's African, and like a lot of them study our history better than we study it. Uh, but there's a, there's a brother in Gainesville who's uh, connected to a brother here in Jacksonville. And I think Nana, but we haven't all come together. And then there's people in Africa that, you know, they have a legal status and a cultural status they're trying to share with us. But they're not, um, like everything is really orbiting around me. I'm trying to get the information out there and get people on one page. I think you could help a lot. Um, yeah, you could help a lot because with this Marcus Garvey movement, or the way Marcus Garvey, he took everything to another level because he brought the Caribbean islands on board. Like, you know, there's so many islands. I think Bahamas alone is 700 different islands. Uh, not all of them are inhabited, but it's just so broken up and disorganized. But he organized the Caribbean people. He added them to the African-American church government. So he brought those the diaspora together, and then he's saying, "Let's get the African kings on board, all these tribal chiefs." And then you, you might know the story. He went to Liberia. A report came back saying that the, they were abusing the tribal chiefs, and Liberia just blocked him out of you know the USA. The USA and Liberia blocked him out for trying to work with the grassroots, you know, tribes and you know the business deal. The land he had went to uh, Firestone Tires. So they got all the rubber, all the land that was supposed to go to black diaspora, working with the chiefs and trying to get their own empire going, traditions going. So that's what happened. And it's a hundred years later. And now people are still same people who are saying that they believe in Marcus Garvey. A lot of them are into the politics and let's just get this deal with this politician over here, this tribe over here. They're not really trying to pull everybody together. There's like, you should see it, like a Haitian president, a Jamaican president, an African American president, all in one in one roof, saying that this is what our communities are saying. This is how we're going to work. You know, then the African kings come on board. This is the cultural exchange we're going to do. This is what we have as far as land. And you want a country? You want a military base? Or you want this and that? This is how we're going to redraw the whole map. But like every tribe should be represented. But that's not what's going on. And just so frustrating. And then it, it could become dangerous. So I just kind of stay to myself. Like I really try to cut people off if you know, I, I see something's not right. But that, that's where I'm at. Um, I added you to a WhatsApp group, but a, a lot of them, it's a small group, but the, the, the areas that people c cover, like as far as, you know, in Africa, a lot of people are related all over the continent. So they can call a big meeting. Um, in the USA, we had like a, a southern region going into South America, a northern region going into Canada, and a western region out in Texas and Mississippi going out west. So we had three regions for the whole North and South America. That's why a group might not seem like we're just trying to establish headquarters. Like if Jacksonville and Gainesville were working together, you know, that'd be nice, but we, we, we've, we've worked out that Haiti, um, this is the southern region, basically Haiti, Barbados, and Trinidad have a relationship with Florida, uh, the Gullah Geechee people, uh, some people who ran away uh, from the civil, uh, some people in Trinidad, Haiti, Barbados, there's connections. And then we're looking at Alabama, Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, in North Carolina, having relationships with the Caribbean, and that's basically the Southern region going to South America. We've got a database, everything, but that's the, that's the long and short of it. Uh, the Igbo communities, they have something called autonomous community status. It's something that we think uh, that if we establish that 
you know, relationship. Hey, we have Evo culture, blood, and we have a shared uh, destiny. You know, the, that, you know, I live, I live in a neighborhood where it's look, it looks autonomous, like the government abandoned it. And I'm thinking that it's kind of like that way across the USA, where the people are basically governing themselves. You know, if you, <laughs> you know, where you where like, you live at. I'm in Jacksonville, Florida, but I'm in one of those parts of Jacksonville, Florida, where people say, you know, you don't. You don't, you don't, you don't. I mean, I'm, I wouldn't call it autonomous. Well, you call it autonomous. I'm saying it's, you call it neglected, but it's like if, if, if we have people who are conscientious and moving into neighborhoods or we have like, let's say we have, you know, 50 people or let's say we have a thousand people because the church is working with us and we got all these organizations. Let's say we have a thousand people from festivals to black businesses scattered throughout the city, right? Maybe you have three people in this neighborhood, three over here, three over there. That yeah. Get them, yeah. So you say, okay, you know, this is, let's say, let's say this is a, our autonomous community. Because basically it's not like, it's like your neighbors aren't really going to say anything because a lot of them, you know, they might not, they might not even be in the state of mind to even know what's going on. But you could get the, you know, the your neighbors who might be down with you. And then just have a database of people, organize organize people that way. Like maybe you have a thousand people. I met this one through the business over here, the shirt business, this one over here, the church. Oh, so now we got a thousand members. Uh not getting their addresses. We got some business partners out in Jacksonville. They keep trying to get us to come out there. We might need to make a trip so we can build more on this. Exactly, man. I'm like, it's and the thing is, like, this is six years of me reaching out and then going back to high school, I've even been reaching out to people. You know how everybody says Marcus Garvey and that. But I'm looking at the thing, like, over every day I try to make it sound more simpler. The way I'm explaining it is, okay, you have a Pan-Caribbean Association or network with all the flags. You see, you can see in the pictures all the different Caribbean flags. So you have a pan at the base, and then you get an African-American church. You see the red, white, and blue flag, even though people might not agree with that, you know. But you have a, that's a, like a two-step process. You got the Pan-Caribbean group, you get the African-American group to the church, and now you're looking for the African people in the continent to support, like with the Zulus or the Igbo, the try to like get yourselves organized with us. I actually have Jamaican ties that has a high school. One of my great uncles has a high school out in Jamaica, and I need to get more connected and more information. But his name, he got a, a big busk in front of his uh the school, and that's my my great grandmom's brother. Wow. So, yeah, we got the connection. That's that's where my people are from. So, and I'm I'm learning and like listening to you talk. It's like it's cool because I'm getting history and everything. I, don't, I like I won't go down this path and like keep connecting and do what it is you trying to do like put together yeah. whatever it is we got to put together to get this information out to get our our, our youth involved. The the what had happened uh like I I have people in after like, they're hustle and bustle I don't blame them they don't take notes for meetings then people over here that like, I have like a let's say we have twenty different groups we haven't decided a secretary or who's going to be the leader in Jacksonville gathering all the people uh so it's like that's why i have to do the recorded zoom so like hey this is the we've been having these meetings this was said on camera like this is you know but we have it's not like anything secret we have panthers we have people at march that say that they should be governing themselves but what we, we've never had that structure like a pan-caribbean group an african-american organization representative and then people and after that you know because the issue is that they don't want to share politics. Like, they don't want you to come to their country, whether it's the Caribbean or, or whether you're, they don't want you to get in their politics and, like, uh, let's say, now you're a grassroots government, a grassroots town hall. Now you could override the president or you go override the blah, 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 because you have so many numbers being grassroots. So a lot of people don't want the grassroots to really unite. And that, that's, they're the same people you know, flying these flags, red, black, and green, saying that they're this and that. Like, why you never... Because a lot of these organizations are registered, these tribal organizations. I know mine is registered in the USA. 
Like you could literally call us up and say, this is what we want to do. And they'll say, I did it with the Caribbean organization in Houston. It said, okay, I love this idea. Just put it in a presentation form. And, you know, we have all the consulates and government's contacts. They'll just put it in a presentation form where it's uh, presentable and we'll, it's it could be duplicated. So that's where we're at in the USA, in the North and South America, three headquarters. You say, if we have that, I just see how you, I was expecting people like you to jump on. Like we said, if, I said, if you build it, they'll come. So three headquarters, simple and multiply. But the, the stressful part is just people, you know, gaslighting. Like people in these organizations, they'll say, blah, blah, blah. Uh, then they'll, def they'll say they're, they're not doing something like today. It was the constitution. But I could read really well what it says in your constitution where you're supposed to be doing A, B, and C that we just talked about. So I actually, I actually rewrote the constitution of the UNIA, changed all the emblems, spent thousands of dollars to make it straight to the point. Because a lot of people don't have the guts to do this. But they, they can travel all over the world and make presentations about history. And But nah. A lot, of, a lot of people can't read or understand what uh, Marcus Garvey was trying to do, but a lot of people can make presentations and seminars, spend millions of dollars saying, <laughs> this is what Marcus Garvey believed in, this is what he's doing, but just get the Pan-Caribbean group, get the African groups, uh, cultural groups from Africa, and get the African-Americans, the church is global, you know, just do it. But if people don't have the guts and then the church, you know, it does marriage. So it's an African church, black marriage. A lot of people don't have a problem with that. So it's, it's it, it becomes an exclusive thing. <laughs> it becomes an exclusive thing, but that's what it is. That's how the ancestors put it down. Yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, yeah, so, you know, people can stand up or lay down on that type. You know, it's karma for that. You know, you see what's going on. There's a story yeah. out in Milwaukee and Chicago. Those are the most segregated. Milwaukee and Chicago is the most concentrated black areas, right? In the in the USA, where it's exclusively black or segregated. Um, they just there was a woman who got murdered. She was dating a man 14 years her senior, but it looks to me and a lot of other people. And these uh, African uh, discussions that she was pushed, she was encouraged or raised to look like white is better. So there was some dude who was white, a uh, white man, 14 years her senior. She went, she was only a teenager. She went on a date with him and nobody was saying anything. The age gap was messed up or nothing like that. Uh, no, but the guy murdered her and chopped her body up into pieces and threw her. It's it's crazy, like just like the story of Osiris when when you know that represents the nation being broken up. So you no, know, it's like a it's like a pagan ritual. If they're doing pagan rituals on people, man. Yeah, yeah we're not having the you know, you're not having the right response, man. We're not having the right response, and it messes with people, man. We're like, not having the right response because, like you said, there's so many ignorant people that don't know how to tie what's going on around us every day to traditional and sacred things that happened in the past, like you just said with Osiris. Nobody's going to be able to correlate those two things together. But the way that the other side operates, from what I know, they have to tell us what it is they do and they have to show us. It's just everybody that's around us is ignorant. They think it's a joke. They think what they're showing us on TV is just entertainment and it's not them revealing what they're really doing or what they're really doing to us. So it's like it's hard to educate people on what you're talking about because they think basically it's hard to get people to realize they're in a box and they don't understand that a box exists. They don't know that they're in a box. So how are you going to get them to get out of the box? All right. It's good. It's all good. Uh, I like your brother. You're like a I'm always reserved, like wait and see. I know I was probably standoffish and like matter of fact but like you, I could say like I'm so literally surprised when people actually help or do stuff because like I, I put out, you saw I put out the mess, same message to a whole group chat and you're the only one who responded. And then I could say, you're probably one of the only people who, and you did it fast. You drove up to the spot and said, hey, what's going on? Let's do this. 
I, I can say I have a whole group of people right now that I added you to that and haven't shown that initiative. And I've been doing this six years and networking even longer, maybe 10, 15 years, talking to the same people, saying that they want to do stuff. But it looks like the people from, it is what it is, man. Like when someday you have a breakthrough, but that that's what it is. Um, I could say that we reduced things, uh, headquarters, Jacksonville, down into the Caribbean, or the, I don't know if you know the Gullah Geechee states, uh, from North Carolina down to Florida. We uh, added- Send me all this information. I love learning. Send me everything you're talking about right now. Oh yeah, we're, we're looking at the we're looking at the North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, Florida, Alabama, and uh, Trinidad, Barbados, and Haiti as uh, keys for one region. Then you know the DMV, the Great Lakes states, and Canada as well, another region. This is all recorded. I could uh, share it further, but it's all recorded. And then. Uh, the Mississippi Delta, we call it Greater Memphis, uh, and Texas. So that's Texas, Arkansas, Tennessee, Louisiana, Mississippi. That's five states in that region. You know, there's a that region is, has the most black communities and counties. Um, very large black cultural spot. Um, if you yeah, you can tell by the music, but it's a real, very black, uh, strong black population there. And that would be the headquarters for all the way to California and the Western states. Uh, they'd have to check in with that place, you know, the black concentration. And in the South, if you look at the states, you review it. For the Southern states, that's where people said that the black belt, the reparations belt, Tupac saying, let's build a nation. And he's a black Panther. That was that movement with Malcolm X and two, the Shakur family. That, the South, that, the, the, those are the Southern states basically where they said is a capital. And so we, I kind of remixed everything on a, a hip hop type, type thing. It's a hip, let's mix the hip hop, the African symbols, the language, the different dictionaries, let's put it all in one. So I got I got some documents. Um, there's a, one document is just a bunch of programs uh, and emblems and associations where, that have been remixed to make it click together in like a domino effect. For example, if it was uh, the agricultural program, maybe you put a flyer up or a uh, you know one of those things. You just you know I don't know what they call them where you pin it into the ground, like the voters thing. You just but you put an emblem on it. Said it would say a Rusi, and it would have that yeah, explanation. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and it has that African language on it, the Igbo language. You you can explain what the language means, and then it's the people on the other side of the water. Say, oh yeah, we're related, we're the same people. Uh, yeah, they have that kind of protection. And then the lawyers from overseas will get involved, or the immigrants will get involved and say, Yeah, let's 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 talk, let's settle this. But we're gonna have that all uh put together. What what has happened, a lot of people will take an African language or idea and they will not be in contact with people from overseas or immigrants, and then it'll go like bad, it'll make the news, people will get hurt. That's what happened in Grenada. You know, they, they used some Swahili idea of building a village and the leader got assassinated. And this is a city, a, a country of only 100,000 people. And people just forgot about it, that the US invaded a black country in the West for using the African village system. Ujama, and we use it for Kwanzaa, Ujama. So people, that was the 80s. So people forget about it. But, you know, so that's, you take all these lessons and you put it in a form, uh, uh, form the African village system. You work with people overseas. They're they're in tune with self determination, self government, autonomy. They're in the they're in the communities as immigrants. You know, you just find the right ones that can be bridged back and forth. So we've been waiting for brothers like you to come on board. Not uh, sister, uh, Doctor Ayoka as well. Uh, she has a connection to the AME in Jacksonville. So it's like it's like we put out these symbols and ideas and mark our territory and the communities. Like we everybody has a connection to those churches because they've been used as town halls. You know, people can't afford their own town halls. They said, let's, let's just put the money in the church. It's already there. So people a lot of people who are into this work have to use the churches or the mosque anyway. So 
if they're even if they're into spirit African traditional religion, which I am. But you know, every everybody a lot of times people have to go to the church because they don't have the money. Uh, at the end of the day, so the church says, "Yeah, we understand that." You know, a lot and a lot of the churches, they're descend they're descendants of African kings and chiefs and priests that went into the church because, like, hey, this is what this is what we have to do to keep our flock or our, our community in our position as chiefs. So that's the, a lot of the church is built on that. You know, I'm the king, I'm the chief heritage. So they're like, "Oh yeah, we we understand. That's that's what we're here for." A lot of times, you know, so that's just history. Uh, that's powerful, I think. But yeah, we got a lot of uh, support. Um, now you said you something about Atlanta. I'm interested in Atlanta because, nah, I don't. I wouldn't want to center Atlanta because I've been doing that even up to today. Like where it doesn't really work. But if somebody has a natural connection to Atlanta. Uh, from in Gainesville and Jacksonville doing their thing and it can branch to Atlanta. I'd be interested in that. You said something about having connections in Atlanta? Yeah, I have two two daughters. One's 24 this month and one will be 23. They both live in Atlanta. And my mom's husband, all his family is in Atlanta. Hmm. Oh, yeah, so, my wife's family. I forgot all my wife's family is in Atlanta, too. Well, see, that's what it is. I like that's why, because my most I'm not from East Coast. I was raised in the West Coast, and then my most of my family's like generations of my family's like my, let's say my dad is the first one to move to the country. So like I don't have if I have an idea, I can't really spread it through family like that. But I, I've been waiting for somebody that could. So I'm praying this all works out. Um, I don't know uh, what next step you'd like to take. I know I have to meet with other people, keep meeting with other people, having things set up, uh, marching in Jacksonville. But if you have like a, I don't know, I can send you the documents um, of the, the, what we call, we could call the UNIA, it's so a Uganda, Nigeria Empire Associate or Administration. And then you, you start looking into, you know, the Uganda Nigeria connection and what they're doing over there. When you yeah. say marching, what are you actually talking about? Like we're part of uh let's see, they're like the ex Black Panthers in Jacksonville. So the, the Black Panther Party, um it's kind of in a rebuilding phase. It's not as big as it was maybe fifteen years ago. Uh so the leadership here has put together their own formation. From the our alumni, let's say it's alumni group, Panther alumni. So we're going to be, I'm going to be representing the Ebo autonomous communities and w working with them to recruit people. And we're just like saying, hey, we're working together. Um, let's defend our community. Let's put people together and just showing our face out there that, you know, there's a new unity on, on the horizon. So marching. Let's say I'm I'm be putting boots on the ground, basically going into different neighborhoods, and seeing passing out flyers and stuff like that. So that's May 17th in a week or so. So, yeah, that basically I joined up <laughs> the Panther to be frontline, uh, self defense training. Uh, there's a we just printed out a pamphlet that's 200 pages. Um, now one thing that I was thinking about, we have also the American Veterans of Igbo Descent. Uh, it's a military group here in Jacksonville, Florida from Igbo land, doctors, lawyers, military vets. Um, it's a powerful group, but we haven't connected them. We haven't really connected. I've connected with, I've reached out to everyone, but everyone else doesn't reach out to each other kind of thing. So that's what we're working on. Maybe I, you could be a spark maybe. So if you just call meetings and people communicate, you pick up the phone, cold call, and say, "Hey, where are you at for the meeting? Did you did you contact this person?" A, an extra hand goes a long way. Um, in Jacksonville, the military veterans need to be brought aboard. Uh, we're gonna be. I can tell people that we have Gainesville uh, farming farming going on. Um, they're putting up a yeah. 
I know the, the timing is bad with the Reverend, his sister just passed away. So uh, he's doing what he's doing uh, to deal with that grieving and uh, writes a passage for the funeral and things like that. So, but that's one of our, our allies up in Gainesville that have done work with uh, Makah Muhammad and Reverend Rawls. They have a direct relationship as far as activism. I think they marched against the Confederate statues. But yeah, doing, doing I think th having three regions and just showing something, if, having three headquarters in three regions, it magnifies it. If you could put it down in one place and have headquarters where say, hey, this is how you duplicate it. It'll go a long way. We have the Houston Professionals Association, the uh, Caribbean Association, they told us the same thing. You just put it down in a profi uh, professional way that is presentable and can be duplicated, we're down. So Houston was a, a Houston, Greater Memphis area, uh, DMV with DC, which you said you're going to, Jacksonville, Florida, down into the Caribbean and South America. That's let, me ask you this. let me ask you this, and then I got to go. Does, uh, Pastor Rawls and his church do anything with food insecurity and like doing anything with with, with that kind of like food emergency no. for the community. What is the church, what the church does, is more like a town hall and it's an audience. Like if you want to speak, just like what Marcus Garvey did. That church is going to do what they're going to do. But if you want to speak and recruit, you know, and like convert people to what your way of thinking and your projects and promote it. He's the type of person I'll say, yeah, I'm down for the black community. Let's, let's, let's talk. Let's do this. And then he's, if he sees, you see it's in multiple cities that want to be, he's not going to turn it down. Some people will turn it down, but he's the type of person to say, we talk to him, you know, he'll say, yeah, I'm down with whatever. It, it, it was one point where I even said, hey, we have these African cultural books. Would you guys be able to print them out using the uh, church facilities or the church you know, global infrastructure, will you be able to print books for education? He said, yeah, that was years ago. So it's not, it's more about can you bring, can you actually do what you say you're going to do? Because a lot of people have done programs like what you're doing, but they won't bring it to the church for maybe political reasons. Or, you know, it's, I don't know. A lot of people don't actually present it to this church. And a lot, like we have a big, and, and let me say say this, in Jacksonville, Florida, we have a big, it says AME Church Enterprise Building. It's, it's like empty. It looks like, I mean, the government watches that church because it's an old African revolutionary church. And people shoot it up all the time because they know the revolutionary history, the connections to Haiti and revolution and Haiti having voodoo empires and kings and not doing democracy or voting, just breaking free from the system, going back to the African stuff that you see in the movies. So, I mean, that's the church. That's where, that's the like vibranium is right there. So we, we're getting a network. The guy in Atlanta, the brother talks a lot, man, but he invited some people from Jamaica that really connected to politics and they don't, they didn't do the pan-Caribbean thing. They, didn't, they, they were doing their own thing separate from gain like i had like seven churches that or cities that said let's do it i think atlanta would have been the eighth and they just did their own thing that was it was like jamaican only and there wasn't no mixing if you don't mix people together then there's no politics i mean you're not you're saying stay out of our politics is you know we don't want you doing this in jamaica coming together pan-caribbean it, it was it was really messed up because the way they did it made it look like it's it's about unity, but it's it's really not. You got to get the Pan Caribbean Association and governments; they're all connected. It would have been easy to invite them all, and that's that's not what happened in Atlanta. So it's like it's like you set off a nuclear bomb or a stink bomb. Now can can you put it back and fix it? It's it's kind of messy what they did. So Atlanta, and they said it's going to be an annual event where it's going to be that one person leading speeches about Garvey, but he's not doing what we're doing. So Atlanta is a place that kind of it's got a now it's got a bad aroma around it and a bad aura as far as working with the churches, uh, the African Methodist Church specifically because it's global AME church. Atlanta got a bad reputation, kind of, um, but there's Gainesville, Jacksonville, Wilmington, North Carolina, Charleston, Birmingham, Alabama. 
Uh, I'm, I think Baltimore, but that's iffy. But yeah, so it's. Uh oh. Oh, uh, so I think I ran. Uh, I'll and there you said you have to go. I'll let you have the last word. Uh, I'm 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 still here. I thought it went away because you only had a thirty minute Zoom. Oh no. Um, you you could go. Uh, you could say. I I was I don't want me to ramble on, but you say what you had. Nah, to say. I like that. I like I like that. It's just I was spending time with my wife, so I was just trying to get, give her some more time. But send me the recording because I want to listen to this more. We're going to build the network more. I'm going to just be sending you texts so we can take the next step. Okay. To what we gotta do. Yeah, I, do. I don't know if you're familiar with – are you familiar with the word hoodoo? Hoodoo? Yes. yes. In, a, in Igbo, in Yoruba, it means uh, divine, divine utterances or um, – and Igbo means advice or guidance. So if you come, if you look at the words, and then you look at the word medu speech, and uh, Kemet ancient Egypt, basically you're talking about conversation. So if you look at words as programming the brain, conversation, programming spells, what it is is that we're not communicating enough. Like you, this is the most communication I've had. Uh, for a while, like you rapid fired me. It was almost, it was overwhelming. I was at work, but I, I got, we keep the communication going, you know, really it's maybe four regions or something like that. that got to come together. You, you said you are connected to Philadelphia, to Chester, you know, uh, Atlanta, you're going to DC. So it's like, we, and we said we only have three regions. It's just something that's going to multiply. The same thing in Africa, where we in uh, Madagascar, a place like that. It's, it's going to multiply if we keep conversating, keep the conversation going. But uh, I just want to close out my statement saying, that just like a cake, Pan Caribbean Association. I can send the picture with the with the the flags. It was the Pan Caribbean Association as a base. They organized African Americans, got their platform through the church, and their leader elected a leader for the African Americans through the church. And then they said, oh, let's get the African kings in Liberia. And then it got messed up. And Liberia is still a messed up zone. It was colonized. There's, there's some tribes that aren't exactly, quote unquote, related to the rest of the population. But the most of the Liberia and Sierra Leone, the, most of those guys are the Mali Empire. And you see in the news, Mali, Niger, Burkina Faso, they're trying to re resurrect the Mali Empire. But that region in Liberia, Sierra Leone, they're trying to like connect to America. They're not tr even trying to participate in the, the Federation of Africa. And that's messed up because that some of the people in the Pan-African Federalist Movement should be promoting that unity with the Mali Empire and the movement going on there. But they're saying more like, forget that, just black people from USA come over here. But you're not paying attention to the rest of the continent. And they're actually having a federation right now. They're creating their own money. They're saying, let's forget the borders, one military. They're calling it a confederation. So that's the stuff I got issues with. Like, we're, we're not on the ball, in my opinion. And I just say I can push it further by myself or orbiting around myself and recruiting people. But that, yeah, I got a particular way of bringing people together and vetting people. So that's about it. But it was, it was good talking to you. But if, I could go on for hours, but. Uh, it's good talking to you, and I think I hope we can continue growing and going. Um, there's actually <clears throat> the Ebo people. They're like um, one of those people that took the UNIA and they warped it their own way. Where now they're mm -hmm. fighting to have their own government. They're like fighting the government. They're saying, "Oh, this tribe is taking our land." They're coming from North Africa and. Uh, running away from white people and they're fighting us. So no, the government's not helping us. Let's have our own government. Uh, yeah, that's basically what's going on. And they set off, they set up offices throughout the, or contact persons throughout the USA uh, to have their own government. You know, they have issues where they identify, they had a genocide. Now they call themselves, you know, they have the Israeli Affiliations saying they're Jews. They've been through their own Holocaust. 
that's an issue I have with them. But they they set up their own government in exile. I've been part of those forums. I'm from the same ethnic group or tribe, so I'm I'm saying a put everything together, sit at the table, or find a way to get them at the table, and that's how it's going. There's military veterans. They've set up, you know, they they don't get along. To, they're they're in, they're kind of they're kind of funky, but getting people at the table is possible. They got military veterans organizations, autonomous community status. They got a government in exile. Um, but the way it has to be presented is that if you want your own country, you got to say, how, how's it going to structure the rest of Africa to be a federation? So I, I could send the documents. I'm going to send them where that would work out. But it's like USA and the North America is three headquarters. South America, uh, same thing. It's basically 10 regions around the world. The whole Negro world concept, the Royal Negro world organization, Garvey head government. So It'll work out, but I'll, we'll keep texting and communicating, God willing. So you could be a big help because it only takes you know, uh, one person to set it set it off, a domino effect. But I don't know. I'll, we'll, we'll stay in contact, brother. It was good speaking to you. All right, man. I look forward to it. It was nice talking to you. Yeah. And uh, do you have any last words like, uh, recommendations because I know you said you already moving these projects uh, as far as the agriculture and self medication through food and things like that. Well, like, I asked you... the thing about the church because there was just a, a RFP that got paid out for nine hundred and sixty two thousand dollars, and the community has to run it. The people who have the money came back to my me and my team, and we about to lead and run this thing. And we about to have a, they about to help us and give up the money and build the whole infrastructure around food hub, where it's aggregation and distribution, where we're networking with farmers to use their local stuff. And we're giving it, we're, we're supplying the schools, the prisons, the hospitals. And I threw my part in there. We're going to have our own grocery store, basically a, a produce market. I don't know if you're familiar with up north, it's called Produce Junction. So we'll basically have a Produce Junction that's feeding off of what's going on. And they're, they're trying to use these food pantries that's around here that's giving bullshit. And we went to the meeting yesterday. I'm like, nah, this ain't acceptable. So I and traveled is- an hour and 45 minutes away to a food pantry that gives fresh produce. And this is who I'm going to use. So this is where we at right now with this. So this is Gain- this is Gainesville, right? Yes. Do you have uh, – sur- uh, is Gainesville close to Tallahassee? It's three hours away from Tallahassee. Oh, yeah, I got connections in Tallahassee, too. I forgot. I just got okay. with somebody at FAMU who connected me with a professor, Q Lee. He hasn't called me yet, but I got a curriculum program that mimics a curriculum program from when I was in a union hall in Pennsylvania. They got a school in Exton that they train everybody in all the construction that they need. And they send them out in the field, and they get paid top dollar. I want to bring that here because they got 3,800 acres in Brooksville, and I was there yesterday, and this is where this school can be built, and we can produce black agriculturalists that can be just like how this construction industry is. And I got all the language to give to them, and I wanted to come through fam. So this is where we at with it. Okay, I'm going to um, make a call. Like, the brother, uh, what it is is uh, symbols. I'm going to put a, there's an AME symbol that's Ebo. I, I want to connect you to the e, people in Ebo land who could translate the stuff, but I'll give you some symbols like a, just like a stack, like a stake, like there's an AME symbol. Basically it's a cross with Ebo language saying like, this is land protected by Panthers. Uh, and you know, it's for land reparations. But it's a, it's a clever way of saying it, but it's like saying it's royal land for reparations and self-defense, basically. Right. Uh, the, word, the word firearm, which is a war machine, and a panther are basically, they're like the same word, depending on how you pronounce it. Uh, so it's like panthers, uh, self-defense rifles, land reparations to take by royals, and it's mixed into the church symbol. Uh, the, for farming, there's something that means uh, sending money back home, build strength. And it's like a, it's like a, 
I think it's a star David type symbol, but it's a, it's a ancient Hebrew symbol from Africa that called the Fulani symbol. But uh, it's, so it's like a farming symbol, a nest. So there's a there's some symbol I could send you. I could send you the documents, but basically, uh, you know, the this is how you know the government thinks, U.S. government thinks. Like if you're connected to the Igbo Igbo people in Igbo land, and you say, "Hey, I'm Igbo. I got some connections. This is a, we want to build our own autonomous community. Basically, we want to be self-managing. That's what autonomous means. Auto self. Namus means to manage. So we're self-managing. We're doing everything by ourselves. Like the Igbo people, they're known for business. And then the government, like the government. And I mean, let's not even say government. The people, them people, and say, "Oh shoot, he figured it out." And they can't really come after you after that once you have, you know, a network, a league of people saying that we're going to be developing ourselves. They literally called autonomous communities in Igbo land, uh, someplace in the Caribbean called the Garifuna people. Um, more people are trying to get on board with that that terminology. So I'm gonna send you a lot of I'm gonna send you a lot of stuff. I'm gonna try and tap in with the Atlanta folk, but you know, to be honest, I'll put it out there. They seem scared. They're, they're, like, they're making moves. Like the, instead of the Pan-Caribbean Association, they actually let the Jamaican Association and the politicians come in. And they're not doing that the same. They're not doing it in Jamaica where they're organizing with the church. So it's like the way they did it is like you, you're trying to make stake your claim, saying that it's like anytime you talk about Marcus Garvey or this type of organizing, it's your property. And that's what they did in Atlanta. So that's the con contact I had. And I don't want to get in no BS at this, at this point where people are beefing or saying, no, we invented this movement. So that's what's going on in Atlanta. But, you know, Gainesville, Jacksonville, Florida, we have, we're trying to get this going. Uh, the Caribbean, I got tapped in with them. Texas, they, I called them yesterday, Caribbean Professional Association of Houston. They said they wanted a like presentation form. Now the DMV, the the contacts I had there, uh, they're kind of shifty. I think they might be working with a brother from Jamaica, uh, who's like into politics too much. His dad, his dad was actually the prime minister, so he said statements about he wants Jamaica not to be a, a Jamaica to be a republic, which is a you know the Western form of government where you need them folks to show you the Western form of government. But if you know about Jamaica, you know they have Maroons, runaway Africans with their own towns and chiefs. <laughs> and that's where Marcus Garvey comes from. He comes from a lineage of African chiefs in Jamaica. So, you know, Jamaica has like you, the, this, the, the Western form of government and voting and political parties. They have runaway African chiefs with their own towns that like you're trying to build, or we're trying to build. They got the education system. No government that they got, you know, the, you know how the, those guys work, man. They don't, you got the religious form of government and leadership. So Jamaica is hard to navigate uh, unless you know the right people. Uh, runaway African towns called Maroons in Jamaica. So it's, it's crazy, man. But uh, I don't know. I lost my track of thought. But yeah, we'll, we just got to focus on Gainesville, Jacksonville, maybe. Find out something in the up there north up north. We just keep it moving, but Houston's already down. We just you know just up to connect to Africa or Ebo land and Nigeria. Uh, Haiti wants to travel, so I'm gonna make follow up calls. But it, it's good talking to you, and uh, I enjoyed it. Um, and uh, Nana, Nana Yoka, Nana Yoka has connections to Jacksonville AME, so if you could bring it down here, she could be helping that. So yeah, we about to. I'm about to drive her to DC on the uh, 18th. So we'll be together for 24 hours. We'll do a lot of building. Oh yeah, try and, I I could give you that AME church symbol too. And all right. uh, the, me everything right, with the info, I'll, I'll, man. I'll send you all that stuff. All right, peace. All right, peace. Only two documents. All right, peace. All right.